you. Good to see you. Yeah, yeah. Welcome to the Hidden Canyon. <laughs> nice place. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's it's down deep in here. It's a miracle house because it, it survived the, the Woolsey fire. And so all my neighbors lost their houses except for one other guy who was lucky enough he stayed and saved it. Um, but I was actually in Munich and had to watch the whole thing by the internet and by some miracle. This place is still here, so it, it's a really special place in my heart and very happy to be back back here. And uh, actually with, with COVID and, and the home working, and I've had the opportunity to be here pretty much all the time <laughs> for the past two years and working with my team on everything was, was mainly home working um, and also together with the Lara and, and the guys at, at BMW Motorsport. Um, it was all a remote um, activity really because of you know the situation with uh, Corona. There's a lifeblood to have the team together and have that chemistry uh, and so yeah we're, we're, we're taking steps back now and uh, that, that's really good. Yeah cool I'll show you around. Thank you. All right so come on in. And my favorite thing about this house is actually its relationship to the outside. And you can see it's it's mainly glass. And you know, I think that's that's really cool here in California to be able to soak in a little bit of the sunshine. Hey Maurizio. Hello everybody. You guys have the embedded guys there filming you on us. We do. I was just gonna. I was just gonna take that opportunity to introduce them. I don't hear. I'll switch my camera around a little bit. There they are. Ah, Hi. Hi. Justin, Hi. Renee. Yeah. Hello, hello. Yeah, our best messengers telling the story. Mike, I'm going to see your uh, your Goodwood car next week. Oh, you are. You're gonna see it before me, huh? Yeah. Uh -huh. Are you jealous? A little bit. We start with the with the tail lights, maybe. Because actually, I've two or three questions regarding our setup with the L's if we really have to have this because we have some issues. On the right picture, the first L is the target. So this, uh, this junctions here, they are not perfect at the moment, but uh, we're going to optimize them. You see the picture or the video? Yeah, it actually looks better on the video than in the picture. <laughs> it's really cool though. It's pretty bright, yes. Yeah, it's really cool, yeah. Yeah, it but is. They've done, and there you see uh, yeah, the difference in brightness. Yeah, the upper L looks super cool, except for, except for the very tip at the top. But yeah, Hussein, you have a you have a preference between those options? Yeah, I think the different intensities would be my preferred option. But I also think that we need to at least have some kind of a separation between the two. Okay. Uh, thanks everyone for taking the time today, and uh, speak to all of you soon. Yeah. Perfect. Thanks so much. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Ciao, ciao. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 The first um, real instance of GTP racing in the U.S. Um, with prototypes was in 1981, and uh, and that's really what changed uh, the landscape of, of sports car racing in the U.S. They look like spaceships by comparison to these kind of production-based uh, cars uh, that were were there so far, and. Um, yeah, I think that's that's why it probably affected me so much. But as a nine-year-old, seeing those cars that really did look like these out-of-this-world uh, objects, um, yeah, it compelled me to to want to be involved with motorsport for the rest of my life. And um, so, not only did those cars change the course of sports car racing in the U.S., they also changed me. Uh, and so, that's why for me, GTP racing and the opportunity to contribute to to BMWs. Um, latest uh, effort is is really a dream come true. Also im Moment wird angeblich äh, Monocoque Nummer 3, LMDA Monocoque Nummer 3 eingelegt. Ah, ja. okay. Ich weiß nicht, ob wir das sehen können. Wahrscheinlich ist das ja im, in irgendeinem Reinraum. Vielleicht können wir irgendwie durch die Scheibe schauen. Also mit dem ersten haben sie, soweit ich jetzt weiß, die Crash-Tests und Drücktests gemacht. Dann ist Nummer 2, ist quasi unser erstes Testauto. Nummer 3 wollen sie jetzt gerade bauen. Aber das Auto, bis das mal da ist, das ist nicht mehr lang. Und noch, noch früher sehen wir ja dann das, das, das Goodwood-Modell. Dann ziehst du das, das erste Mal in, 
Lebensgröße. In Lebensgröße. Die aerodynamischen Details haben wir da ein bisschen weggelassen, aber das sieht schon, also es sieht echt aus. Ja. Jetzt sind wir hier. Ja, du darfst ja auf der Charging Station Genau, fahren. ich hole mir jetzt ein bisschen <lacht> italienischen Strom. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. This is the LMDA chassis, the guys are doing the honeycomb fitting. So the chassis has been cured first out the skin and then every single piece of honeycomb has to be hand fitted to match with the surfaces. This is the left hand side of the chassis. Uh, you see it's split uh, in vertical, so it's the left hand side of the chassis. Das hast du gezeichnet. Hat gezeichnet, genau. Und dann, wo ging die Zeichnung hin? Und die Zeichnung ging dann zu unseren Aerodynamik-Kollegen. Ja. Die haben sich dann die Flächen angeschaut und haben daraus dann Aerodynamik-Server oder Aerodynamik-Flächen abgeleitet, digitalisiert, dargestellt, berechnet, im Windkanal getestet. Sobald diese Außenhülle steht, bekommen wir, wie gesagt, diese Teile erst. Und dann definieren wir auch noch Details, wie jetzt, wo sitzt welches Splitline. Wo macht es Sinn, Zugänglichkeit für die Mechaniker? Wir als Ingenieure haben jetzt nicht unbedingt das ästhetische Empfinden. Also wir haben ein Empfinden dafür, was ist ein gutes Bauteil? Wie kriegt man ein Bauteil möglichst leicht? Wie kriegt man ein Bauteil möglichst robust? Also Rallye macht es schön, wir machen es schnell. So it's 114 turns from the house to the main road. So this road is like my my cup of coffee in the morning. My own my own private Nürburgring. <laughs> Because we were driving too slow. That's what I figured. Uh, I was I was watching and I saw him behind you and I was like. Because oh. he said like it's a 55 speed limit and we don't we were driving 35. Yeah, yeah, it was suspicious. Uh, I, I I was watching and I was like, oh man. <laughs> uh, it's huge. Yeah, my actually my favorite memory of of that building is before this one was here. There was the parking lot came past here, and one day I, I was doing. Uh, laps around the building with my race car. You know, probably going a little too fast. And uh, came around and I saw Chuck standing right at that corner. So I sort of slowed down, but I, I, it would, I couldn't slow down that much. And I, I came past him and as, as soon as I was coming up, he just goes, go, 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 go. And, and, he, and he was like, go more, 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 more. And he came and he watched a few more laps and it was like, That was such a perfect Chuck Pelly moment because he was a racer. You know, he designed actually the Scarab when he was 19 years old, which was a really, really cool car. And uh, yeah, he was he was the guy that hired me here. And and I think yeah, that spirit was is something that's still still with us today. But um, I don't know if my boss would let me do laps around the building at the moment. But um, that was that was super super cool. I'll never forget it. So anyway, that's the best thing that happened in this spot. for proper drama. This was your first yeah. project? It wasn't the first project, but it was the first project for BMW Motorsport. Um, so this was around 2001, 2002. And um, yeah, it's the Formula BMW and the, the design brief there was 
actually sort of similar to, to LMTH in that um, they asked us to really make sure that the car had a BMW identity. Um, in this case, it was a formula car for, for uh, young drivers, so like Sebastian Vettel, Nico Rosberg, um, I think D Daniel Ricciardo yeah. also went through, Hulkenberg. Hulkenberg yeah. It's a formula car, but and how do you make it a BMW? And like if you, if you come in here on the nose area, you'll see that we, we, we used like a, a kidney grill uh, arrangement for the wing mounts. And uh, that was something that hadn't been done before on a, on a formula car for sure. But, you know, if you look at the LMDH now, it's actually a little bit of the same. So maybe you can't teach an old dog new tricks. So... Justin. Hi, Justin. Justin. Hi, hi, hi. hi. So, so right here, um, I, what I did is I just printed out uh, where we were at with mm -hmm. the, the, the top three concepts. We have a vertically running <laughs> logo, mm -hmm. which stands out on its own, which is really nice because I think it would emphasize the branding, uh, brandability. It, it's just such a featured area. As you can see, uh, we haven't focused too much, but the, the front of the car actually gets a lot of camera space. When the, when the photographers are are shooting you know, down low at it, so it's something that we should take a look at. We, I don't think we've we've uh, really explored that to the depth that we have with these other ones for the front view. And I do think that the the little glitches help break the the sort of bars. Um, the UPC. Look. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah it, exactly. Mm -hmm. So so I think that's a, a really good evolution. We've seen the um, the. The works livery in progress. This one was using really the great cars from uh, BMW's history of IMSA racing and creating this mosaic pattern um, that that really becomes this this um, very kind of difficult to uh, decipher um, uh, uh, layout but as the, the more you study it and the more you know the cars the more you find them and we, we really like that kind of historic um, uh, storytelling that was involved with this one and this is actually the the um, the design theme that was selected to go forward and um, this is what we'll be taping um, the week after next uh, in Munich <laughs> That's a spaceship right there. That's cool. You hear a lot of people when they say like a, a black car that looks kind of like badass. They say it looks like a Batmobile. And I used to always take it, take offense because like, what do you mean it looks like, it looks like a Batmobile? This is a unique design. This doesn't, looks nothing like a Batmobile. <laughs> Looking at this now is like, yeah. <laughs> That's a Batmobile. Mm -hmm.